I'm going to cut straight to the chase. Shin Megami Tensei If is the most disappointing game I have covered on this show because it is too much old and not enough new. Its UI, battle system, and most enemy designs are lifted verbatim from SMT2. And it doesn't even have any original music. Every single track was taken from one of the first two games. I have had people argue with me about this fact and have come to the conclusion that any new song attributed to this game stems from the play PlayStation port released eight years later. This is not a video about the PlayStation edition, it is about the one that I played for the Super Famicom. The reason this episode is so short is because there is almost no new additional material to talk about. I thought about replaying segments from my first two Shin Megami Tensei videos as some sort of a tongue-in-cheek joke about recycled content, but that's too embarrassing even for me. Enough about what's old though, what does IF bring to the table itself? The premise is you're a teenage student sitting in class, when all of a sudden your school gets sucked into the demon dimension by the demon king. The if from the title is supposed to represent a what if scenario. What if the events of Shin Megami Tensei 1 never happened? Which honestly is almost a cool concept for a game. Yeah, what if some events of Shin Megami Tensei 1 didn't happen? There are many points within that story where you could break off and tell a different tale. Like what if we never launched nukes at the beginning? What if the demons never invaded? What if the messiahs never build the temple after the apocalypse. Unfortunately though, this game doesn't go with any of those and instead opts for what if this school that you never see and characters that you never meet are sucked into another dimension? Like, okay? What, what if that happened? What, what is this? It's not even connected to the first game. This screen you're seeing right now is like a world map. Here's your school, here's a small central hub area, and there's five dungeons surrounding you, each named after a different deadly sin. Envy, pride, greed, sloth, gluttony. It's your job to make it to the end of each area, defeat a boss, and get the five MacGuffins required to save your school. So you do that, which opens up one final area at your school, where you challenge the Demon King, kick his ass, and save the school. And that's it. There's no twists, there's no late game revelations, no character development, there's hardly even any dialogue after the opening bit. If's hook is that you're supposed to replay it multiple times with different partner characters. And I should explain how this works. After a brief questionnaire and being taunted by our main antagonist, at the start of the game you're sitting in class, when all of a sudden everything starts shaking and everyone is trapped inside the building. You automatically walk outside your classroom and this girl named Yumi asks if you want to go with her. Naturally, Unless you have already watched other YouTube videos about this game. Unless you've already read the game facts. You're gonna say yes, because there's no reason not to. Well, here it's a dummy option. I did not learn about this until after beating the game and doing basic research for this video, but if you say yes to Yumi, you are locked out of the true final boss and ending. Less than two minutes into the game, and I might as well have hit restart. Very funny, Atlas. Ha ha, I'm laughing. What you're supposed to do is say no, walk away, find this other girl named Rico, or this guy named Charlie, and go with them. From what I understand, it's mostly the same game no matter who you choose, but I'm not about to find out for myself because I'm not replaying the same game again, especially one that I didn't particularly enjoy. The differences, apparently, are all in how the game ends. With Yumi, you return to your school, defeat the Demon King, and that's it, the game ends. With Rico, after this fight, you go into his mind where there's one last dungeon and the true final boss. And with Charlie, you don't even go back to the school. There's a whole other separate final dungeon that you do with him. So you're getting 90% the same content no matter who you choose, but I've no doubt lost my gamer card for doing the route with the least amount of content. All of this has one exception. After beating the game, you unlock a fourth option to go with this guy named Akira. Instead of the world map and doing five different areas with a hub in between, you're transported into one new humongous area which makes up the entire game. It's 51 floors with five checkpoints. And no, I did not do the whole thing. Yeah, take my gamer card again, I don't care. But I did try it out. I played it for 6 hours and 42 minutes, which was just enough time to make it to the 12th floor and first checkpoint. Yes, that's right, for the first 6 hours and 41 minutes, every time I died I got sent all the way back to the beginning and had to walk all the way back up. It was tedious to say the least. It's a cool, neat little unlockable, but I've seen the Marsh video. This route doesn't change the story or anything. You're still going to defeat the Demon Lord at the top of this tower, and not much of anything else is gonna happen in between. It's got all the party-making, demon-summoning action you'd expect. It's just 
packaged differently. And I know for a fact that nothing I'm going to see in the Akira route is going to change my overall opinion on this game. Because at the end of the day, it's hard to recommend Shin Megami Tensei if to really anyone. I don't know who this game is for. If you've never played a Super Nintendo era SMT game, then for the love of God, don't look here. Look at one of the real games. Play one of the first two. You'll get everything this title will give you, plus an actual plot line. A good one too. And if you've already played one and two, then you've already played if. The plot isn't worth giving a shit about, and almost everything else was stolen from the other games. Marsh enjoyed it because he played it before the other two SMT games on Super Nintendo. And sure, in a vacuum, if you ignore that those other games exist, it's a decent little dungeon crawler, but the game is still mostly recycled content, and everything it doesn't steal is such a mixed bag. The main way the combat is different is this thing called the Guardian System, which just fucking sucks, I'm sorry, it sucks. Every time you die, you're assigned another demon, which alters your stats in different ways. And for your partner, it also determines what spells they have access to. So you get used to the spell sets you have, only to die and have all your spells be replaced. And remember, the Super Nintendo SMT games don't tell you what spells do. You need to either make notes yourself or memorize what all these foreign words are. Constantly changing your spells adds another obstacle to actually understanding what they do. Each of the five main dungeons have their own gimmick which run the gambit between unobtrusive to clever to one being the most bewildering dungeon design I've ever seen. Enter the world of Sloth, which is only comprised of three simplistic floors. You see this map? It's the final area of this dungeon. And when you first arrive here, it looks more like this. The gimmick is that the Demon Lord has forced students from your school to dig for our MacGuffin, meaning you need to wait for them to finish digging. Literally, you need enough time to pass before you may clear the dungeon, which seems easy enough to cheese. You could simply leave the game on overnight or something, right? But no, that doesn't work, because time only passes when you're moving. Think of it as a certain number of tiles need to be traveled rather than a certain amount of time needs to pass before you can go through. I'm on board with the concept. Honestly, it's actually clever, but they went way too far with this. I'm not about to count the number of spaces I moved, but I will tell you that it took four hours and two minutes. Four hours and two minutes. For them to be finished digging. Atlas of 1994, holy fucking shit, do you think that is enough? And this moment encapsulates the entire experience. SMT if feels more like a waste of time than any other game I've covered on this show. It's certainly not the worst, but it has to be the most disposable RPG on the system. And I hate that because I was really looking forward to making this video. Sorry for shitting on Shin Megami Tensei two out of my last three videos. Well, anyway, that's all I got. Never trust anyone who needs a haircut. Goodbye.